Grace and peace be to you from God our Father and the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The meditation this evening is based on our Savior's suffering before Herod Antipas. You will see that Jesus dispels all superstition by conquering our true enemies of sin, death, and hell. To that end, I offer a sermon text from Luke's Gospel. The same day there came certain of the Pharisees, saying unto the Lord Jesus, Get thee out, and depart hence, for Herod will kill thee. And he said unto them, Go ye and tell that fox, Behold, I cast out devils, and I do cures today and tomorrow, and the third day I shall be perfected. So far the text, let us pray. O Lamb of God, bless thy word, that we may trust in thee. Amen. I'm sure you've noticed some families share a common trait. You might know a family full of driven athletes. Another might be known for their musical talents. Others for their hard work ethic. The members of the Herod family, as depicted both in Holy Scripture and secular history, shared the common trait of paranoia. There are several Herods mentioned in the New Testament, all part of a ruling family around the time of Jesus, and they were highly suspicious people. Rumors, gossip, the silliest, most insignificant of threats filled them with fear to the point of superstition. Now the Herods, they sure did have good reason to be scared. They ruled Judea from a rather precarious position, for they were neither truly Jewish, the ethnicity of their subjects, nor Roman, the empire which loomed over them. The Herods were descendants of Esau, not Jacob and had converted to the Jewish religion, nominally so, as a way to connect with the people, but they were perceived still by many as impostors. And they ruled only beneath, in the place of the Romans, in power as a matter of convenience to Caesar, to keep the people suppressed and the tax revenue flowing. A fragile relationship which they knew could end with an imperial whim and disastrous consequences. All this made them highly paranoid. The first Herod we encounter in Scripture is Herod the Great, the ruler whom the wise men had asked. Where is he that is born king of the Jews? In this familiar Christmas story, you see Herodian anxiety in full bloom. For Herod the Great is scared of a baby. To the point that he tries to sweet talk the wise men into reporting back to him what they find in Bethlehem, as if spies on a fact-finding mission and when that plan fails, he decides to slaughter every infant under the age of two because those Bethlehem toddlers, who knows what they could do? Paranoid. The old adage goes, like father, like son. An adage which proved particularly true for the great Herod's son, Herod Antipas. His father had feared a baby. Herod Antipas feared that baby's cousin, John, which made about as much sense as being paranoid of a toddler. 
John the Baptist preached in the wilderness, wore camel's hair, ate locusts and honey, was the laughing stock of the religious elite. John posed no threat to overtake Herod's kingdom. He was no rabble rouser. There were plenty of true zealots throughout the land who instigated real rebellion. All John did was call it a sin for Herod to divorce his wife and steal his brothers. A criticism of marital infidelity most people today and back then would easily have let slide. Yet for some reason, it gnawed at Herod. He couldn't get John out of his mind. Other despots would have put him to death, but Herod, having come to recognize John to be a just man and a holy, he couldn't bring himself to do it. So instead, he, he kept John imprisoned for quite some time, suspicious of what might happen if he did kill this vagrant who claimed to be the prophet of a god he wasn't sure existed. And then when finally compelled to behead him, Antipas was all the more skittish at the mere mention of John's name. Even fearing a rumor, John had risen from the dead. Not that Herod believed in the bodily resurrection taught in the scriptures. No, he was scared John might somehow return to haunt him as a ghost. Those rumors of John's return from the grave, though, as with all gossip, were a distortion of the truth. For John had not risen from the dead. No, another prophet had begun wandering the land, performing miracles. And it was that baby his father had feared, all grown up. Herod Antipas would come to fear him too. As seen in our sermon text, where the Pharisees try and make Jesus as paranoid as their king. Don't you know Herod wants to kill you? Jesus responds by calling Herod a fox. Now, when we think of the term fox, we, we think of calling someone cunning or clever. But that doesn't really make sense for the Herods. When you took, take a look at their conduct in life, you wouldn't call them particularly smart. No, the imagery of a fox at the time of Jesus was slightly different. An animal which snuck about with cowardice on edge, flighty, ready to dart at the sight of its own shadow, paranoid. Which fits the Herods far better, ruling where they did not belong, frightened of a baby and a ghost. Do you have any silly fears like the Herods? Any superstitions which seem at times to control you? A fear of crowds, of public speaking, snakes, a, a certain routine which, if threatened, you can't function the rest of the day. Are you paranoid of, about your health or finances, terrified of losing control over your life or someone else's? Silly fears, really, which can bring some knee-jerk reactions and behaviors out of us as irrational as the superstition-driven Herods. 
I call them silly fears because the stuff and things of this life are not the things which should really make us afraid. Herod the Great had feared the challenge of a newborn king, but thought little of the wrath of God he would someday face. Likewise, Herod Antipas, he had feared that a beheaded John might creep back to haunt him from the grave, but the eternal condemnation of the law John had preached, he lightly dismissed that. And with Jesus' comment, tell that fox, the Savior gives King Herod yet more to worry himself over. For in Hebrew imagery, kings were lions, not foxes. You see, throughout the Judean plains, lions were king, and foxes, foxes were only so skittish, so paranoid, ready to run from fear that the true ruler could appear at any moment. And by calling Herod a fox, Jesus was sending this imposter the message that he was no king after all but that there was rather another whom he should fear. Could you imagine Herod's reaction to that news and rumor? Oh, the Pharisees could wait to tell him. Jesus said, what? That I'm a fox? Who does he think he is? The lion? Well, that's what scripture calls him. The lion of Judah. The hero of Israel prophesied to come and save. And to do so at the time the scepter was no longer held by a descendant of Judah but by an imposter fulfilled in the Herods. Yes, they did have reason to fear, to think their power could collapse at any moment, but not for any of their superstitious reasons, but because the Lord is governor among the nations the one who increaseth the nations and destroyeth them, who setteth up kings and removeth them again. And Herod meets this, his creator, face to face in our passion narrative tonight. When he does, though, when he meets the Son of God, all Herod's paranoia seems to melt away, at least for the moment. This Jesus, he looks like no king, no fierce lion, there beaten and bruised before him, silent and sullen. Herod had no fear of Jesus. He felt safe enough to joke around. So you think you're the lion, that you're something big? He adorns Jesus in a gorgeous robe and demands a miracle of him. But Herod, he had missed his chance for all that. That time had passed, and now before him was the lamb to be slain the sin of the world. Ponder, dear friends, the grace and mercy 
your Savior shows, even to Herod. In these his final hours, as he is being prepared as the great sacrifice in our place, that Jesus appears before Herod, a, a sinner so filled with hate and pride, instead of serving him the condemnation he deserves, Jesus' silence shows Herod the same patience and humility he has toward you. Such that at least in this moment, all Herod's paranoia disappears. That even he must admit of the one he once feared. Lo, nothing worthy of death is done unto him. Look to Jesus' passion, dear Christians, and let him take all your fears away too. It's what he came to do. Look to Jesus and behold, all of Herod's superstitions fulfilled in the most marvelous of ways. Herod the Great had feared a newborn king. Herod Antipas was anxious that a man from Nazareth could claim to be a lion. All of which becomes reality when Pilate crowns him with thorns and places over his cross the sign King of the Jews. Little did they know they enthroned Jesus right where he belonged. For in God's eternal plan the cross is where Jesus reigns over you in love. And that rumor, that rumor that Jesus was John the Baptist returned to, to haunt Herod from the grave, well, Jesus actually did have that power to rise from the dead, not to haunt, but to make his heaven yours. Lo, Judah's lion wins the strife and reigns o'er death to give us life. The power of death he break in twain when he to life arose again. Herod Antipas, he had beheld the passion, the greatest of Jesus' miracles before his very eyes thinking little of that grace offered him, he went back to his old ways. Instead of Jesus as his king, he let his paranoia rule his life once more. It should be no surprise what happened to Herod. He ended up deposed by the emperor, banished to Gaul, never to be heard from again his worst fears realized. Which is always the case that whenever we chase our superstitions, our paranoia, suspicions, they become self-fulfilling prophecies. But not you. You have the certain promise that Herod's end will not be yours. For although Herod saw Jesus' passion and despised it, you who see it tonight through the word of God, believe it as saving truth. Which makes all the difference. For through, for through Christ's blood and merit, you receive freedom from your real enemies, 
sin, death, and hell. From which faith flows the strength to face any worry of life. Yes, Herod's paranoia resulted in a self-fulfilling prophecy. But you have the joy of divine prophecy fulfilled. That Jesus, God's son, came, died, and rose again for you. In all your anxieties, whenever you find yourself skittish like a fox, turn to the Lion of Judah. For he who has conquered sin in the grave will never tire of giving you his peace. Now that peace that passeth all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord.